There's an old legal maxim that the grand jury has a right to every man's evidence. This maxim remains true today, and the means by which the grand jury retrieves that evidence is through grand jury subpoenas for testimony, for documents, or for other evidence. In this video, I'm going to talk about responding to grand jury subpoenas, what the subpoenas are, how they work, and what you should do if you receive one. And let's start with the basics. What is a grand jury subpoena? It's a document delivered to an individual requiring them to either appear before the grand jury and testify about things that they know, or to deliver documents or other material evidence to the grand jury that they can inspect. If you examine a grand jury subpoena, there's several pieces of critical information we can comment on that jump out. Near the top of the document, there'll be a caption telling you which court it was issued from. There will be a return date, which is the date you have to appear to testify or by which you have to deliver whatever evidence the subpoena might be asking for. And if the subpoena is asking for documentary evidence, there will be a list of the categories of documents that need to be produced. Now, the first thing to understand about these subpoenas is that they're not mere requests. They are backed by the power of the federal courts. If the subpoenas are not complied with, the court has the power to impose contempt, which means fines, even imprisonment, and U.S. Marshals can be sent to your house if you receive the subpoena to actually put you in custody and force you to go and respond. So take the subpoena seriously. The second thing to know, which might be happy news to some of you, is that receiving a grand jury subpoena does not mean you've broken the law or that law enforcement suspects you've broken the law. You may be completely innocent, which may be apparent to the grand jurors, the prosecutors, and so on. To take just a simple example of how that might look in a concrete case, let's imagine we have a money laundering investigation where money is transferred from one bank to another to another. The grand jury is going to have to issue subpoenas to custodians of records at the various banks to get the records of the transfers and so on. And not in one case out of a thousand are those custodians going to be suspected of any kind of complicity in the fraud, in the money laundering. So that's important. Equally important is that in some cases, the grand jury subpoena does in fact mean that you're being targeted or your company is being targeted for prosecution, or at least that you might be uh, suspected of criminal conduct. So it's important when you get the subpoena, before you know which of those two categories you fall in, to obtain counsel that's experienced in grand jury investigations to help you understand what you're looking at. And the first rule before you obtain counsel is don't talk to anyone about your subpoena, not anyone you think might be implicated in the investigation, and most importantly not the agent who served you the subpoena or the United States attorney who is supervising the investigation. Typically these subpoenas have cover letters with the contact information for a, a U.S. attorney, and the natural human temptation is to reach out to those folks, try to figure out what's going on, what's your role in it, are you suspected of anything, and so on. And this is a natural temptation, but it's almost always a mistake, because anything, any statements you make to law enforcement or to anybody can be used against you, and that's true even if you're just calling, as I said, to ask questions, because you don't know what the investigation is about, you don't know what law enforcement knows or what they think they know. And it's all too easy to blunder into saying something um, that you shouldn't have said that later on down the road could harm you. So don't talk to anyone about the subpoena and what you think the subpoena has to do with. Obtain counsel, obtain counsel that understands grand jury investigations, and they can reach out to the government on your behalf. Try and figure out what the case is about, figure out what your role might be in it. They'll talk to you about whatever you know about what might be involved. They'll help you review the documents that the subpoena seems to call for before producing them and try to figure out what's what. If at the end of that process, that investigation with your counsel, it seems that you might be implicated in criminal conduct that the government might think you are, the next question is, do you have any means by which to challenge the subpoena, to withhold evidence that the government doesn't have a right to and that they might later use against you in their prosecution? There are a number of legal avenues by which this can be done, but by far the most common is by asserting your Fifth Amendment privilege against self-incrimination. This can be asserted in response to a subpoena requiring you to testify about things. There's a law involved that's beyond the scope of this video, but it's an option available to many, many people. 
And to a much more limited, although still significant extent, the Fifth Amendment privilege might be able to apply to subpoenas calling for the production of documents depending on the circumstances. Talk about these issues with your attorney. An attorney experienced in grand jury investigations can advise you on if you have a Fifth Amendment privilege or other privilege like attorney-client, perhaps spousal privilege, and the advantages, disadvantages involved in asserting those and what might be involved in litigating them in the court if the government tries to challenge those assertions as sometimes they do. These cases all are very unique to their facts. Uh, it's hard to generalize beyond what I've already set forth in this video so far. But if you did receive a grand jury subpoena or you think you might, feel free to reach out to us here at the firm. We offer free initial consultations of up to 30 minutes. You can email us the subpoena. We can read it and have at least an initial discussion about what you may be looking at and perhaps what we can do to help you. So feel free to reach out to us and thanks very much for watching.